Let's say you're asked to judge how warm a person is. So you'd look at them, you'd watch their behavior, you'd figure out how they comport themselves, and you'd come to some conclusion, and you'd probably stick with the same conclusion every time, right? Well, no. It turns out that human evaluations are swayed by many things, including haptics. A study out of Yale found that you will rate a stranger as being kinder, more generous, and more caring if you're holding a warm cup of coffee while you're making the decision because of the signals coming in through your haptic system. And in fact, even something as fundamental as your relationship with your mother, you will judge to be closer if you're holding a warm cup of coffee than if you're holding an iced coffee. So the feeling of warmth and cold on our system of touch influences decisions that are completely unrelated. And that's not all. An experience of physical warmth can actually reduce loneliness, as people have discovered by using handheld gel warmers. And warmth on the skin changes the way that we interact with each other. There was a recent study where people were put in pairs, and they could either cooperate for a larger reward, or they could act in their own self-interest for a smaller reward. But here was the twist. The pairs of people were given a warmed up hand warmer to hold while they were doing their interactions, and a control group was given the same thing, but they were cooled off, they weren't warm. And what happened is those that were holding the warm hand warmer were more cooperative. It works in reverse too. People who are given the cold shoulder in a social situation end up judging the room to be literally chillier. Why does all this happen? Well, it's because our cognition, how we understand the world and understand other people, has everything to do with our physical bodies. It's these signals upon which our vocabulary and our emotions are built. Physical warmth is the basis by which we judge interpersonal warmth. And that's why there's so much crosstalk when we're dealing with haptics and when we're dealing with social judgments. Warmth is just the beginning of the story of haptic influences on our decision making. It turns out that across many different qualities of touch, your judgments will get tilted. A 2010 study showed that if you're making a judgment about a potential candidate and you read their resume, you're more likely to be impressed by the candidate if you're reading it on a heavier clipboard. Now the thing is this is totally incidental to the judgment you're supposed to be making, but you take the candidate more seriously when you're feeling something heavier. You don't find them friendlier or kinder, you just find them weightier. In a different experiment, volunteers were asked to either hold on to a, a hard brick or a soft blanket. They were told that these were props they were examining for a magic trick. Then they were asked to read a little essay about an interaction between a boss and an employee. Now, the interaction described was ambiguous, but they were asked to say what they thought about it. And it turns out the people who held the hard brick judged the interaction to be more strict and rigid. And those who held the soft blanket thought it was a kinder interaction. Now that's strange, right? That your reading of a scene can be modulated by something that's totally incidental. And the same thing happens when people read that same essay, but now they're seated either in a comfortable chair or in a wooden chair. When they're seated in the soft chair, they tend to view the employee in the story as being more emotional. When they're in the hard chair, they tend to view the employee as more stable. And it's not just judgments about other people. Incidental haptic touch can influence your own behavior. So in one experiment, volunteers were asked to negotiate for a new car. And they were either seated in a comfortable chair or a hard chair. In the hard chair, they were more rigid in their negotiation. They made the same initial offer as the people in the soft chairs, but they were less willing to budge from there. Something about the experience of sitting in the hard chair made them more hardline in their negotiation. The Illinois Attorney General warned holiday shoppers against letting stores put things in their hands for fear it would make them feel like they owned it and make purchases that they regret. But perhaps he should have warned them also not to go to stores that give you warm drinks and touch your hand when they do it and sit you down in a nice comfy chair to negotiate with you. In all of these cases, touch sways decision making.